Hey everyone, it's Carrie Cole, celebrity vocal coach, artist development expert, and new music business mentor. We are live with our Google Hangout. My creative director, Kristen Riley, on the co-pilot on the couch, and we just got back from Washington, D.C., where we spoke at the Recording Academy, uh, the D.C. chapter. We had an amazing evening last night, and um, uh, uh, just to give you a little uh, brief rundown, we had a packed house full of artists, managers, musicians, producers, publishers, and uh, labels, and we had, it was an awesome community of music professionals down there. And uh, thanks to Wendy Cherry and Janine Wilson for bringing us down there. And we talked about all night about the state of the industry. They had to kick us out of the Fillmore. We, we wouldn't stop chatting and uh, conversing. And it was really an exciting moment. We are in a uh, revolutionary time in the evolution of the music industry as we speak. And our goal last night was to change some artists' lives and shift thinking from the old paradigm to the new. And it was amazing to watch so many people have some big ahas and transformational moments. So thank you to the DC chapter in Washington. We had a great time with you guys last night. And we're a little we're a little tired, we're a little punchy. We just got back. We were on the Acela going like this, rocking back and forth, um, trying to get up on our email and uh, and and whatnot, but um, here we are. Um, so tonight, how it's going to go? We're going to have a couple people joining us. Matter of fact, we have Sarah Skinner here. Hi, Sarah. Hey. hey nice to see you here. Welcome. So, good Sarah. See you. Hey, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in so long. Way too long. No. You have been busy. You have been busy, girl. We have been watching you. Very excited to talk with you. So um, Sarah's going to join us. We're going to talk with her in just a few moments. And she's on our success panel today. Is an artist we've been working with over the last several years and was in uh, one of our programs that we're going to also chat about because we're in launch right now. We want to tell you about a great opportunity uh, to join us uh, for the next four months in an exciting program. But uh, we also have Becca Shack who's joining us around 6.30 and Paul um, uh, Paul Ivan from Pinto and the Bean is joining us. So we're going to have a great time tonight. And for those of you that are wanting to ask questions, part of today is to answer your questions uh, about what it is to be your own music mogul today, musician, manager, and mogul. And um, those of you who are posting, how are we posting? For Facebook? Yeah. Um, we're so post those of you who don't have a Gmail, Kristen can explain. Hi. For those of you who don't have a Gmail account, you can just go to facebook.com slash Carrie Cole Voice and Music, and you can post your questions there, and our team is going to pull those questions off and then feed them to Carrie so that you guys still have a chance to get your questions answered. And, and, and if not, if you do have a Gmail, then you can just post them right here in the Google chat on the right-hand side of your video screen. Okay, cool. So sound good. So those of you as uh, yeah, those of you who are watching and uh, hanging out with us, um, as you have questions, you know, jot them down and then you know post them so you can get in the queue for us to answer. Because today we really want to um, answer your questions and and help you make a shift in wherever you are to where you need to be. So one of the things I noticed about last night, and then we're going to start talking to Sarah. Um, one of the things I noticed last night is that uh, there were several artists in the room who were talking about, you know, what's the quickest way to get out there? What's the biggest way to get exposure? What do you think about commercial radio? What do you think about, you know, whatever? There were all kinds of different ideas about how to get out there fast and quick and reach the biggest amount of audience. And I and I think that. You know, as this paradigm is shifting, it's certainly changing the ways in which we're doing that. But the one thing that I wanted to dial back to, which is really important, which is what I teach in a lot of the programs, especially the Fast Forward to Fame program, which we're going to talk about um, tonight, is that there's a system, there's a path and a system to it. And there are certain things that you need to understand, and they're layered, and they go in order. And in the Fast Forward to Fame program, there are 10 steps. And of course, there's more than that, but we try to give a framework so that you can go from here to here to here to here. Because if you go, if you try to jump from here to here, like you say, okay, here I am, I'm an artist, I've got a following of, I don't know, a thousand people, 
you know, maybe on social media I've got a little bit more, but my list is about a thousand or my list is five hundred or something like that. And I want to jump to open for a famous artist or I want to jump to be on commercial radio. That's going from like A to G, but you really need to go to A to B to C to D in order to make those steps to go to G. And once you understand that there's the path in the system and it really is all about leverage. So it's all about gaining momentum and leverage, whether that's through having a bigger list with your fans and followers or getting a song and film and film or TV more even than film to get that exposure, unless it's a big film. But that's harder to get, again, when you're jumping from A. You can't jump from A to G or jump from A to Z. You've got to put those steps in place. So we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. We're going to talk to some artists who are doing that, who are actively doing that. And I'm so excited to have um, with us Miss Sarah Skinner because she is really has taken action and she's going to talk to you about that tonight. And I just want to give a little preface. Um, where do I have my info? I can certainly talk about her without even looking at stuff. But Sarah, we started working right, right. Like a year and a half ago or something, and she's yeah. uh, out of Texas. She's now in L.A. She is working her, her, her career and is doing a great job. She's an incredibly, incredibly talented, one of the favorite artists that I've worked with in terms of her uh, artistic um, qualities, her voice, her songwriting. I'm, I'm just always uh, so blown away by what you're doing, Sarah, and just so wonderfully... Um, uh, not surprised, but just enchanted with you. You know, you have a beautiful, beautiful voice. We, I know we worked a, a, a bit on your voice and made some, you know, wonderful changes for you to make your voice function easier and you to get things. And, and then you, you know, you've kind of gone through the funnel. You started, you know, with the singer's gift and working with me and then you did step up to the spotlight and then you did best word of fame and then you've just been taken off. So, and, and I've been noticing how much you've been using social media to do that. So if you could just, Let's dial back first. Let's share just a little bit. You can remember back, uh, you know, a year and a half ago or so. Briefly share your struggles and your challenges, like kind of where you were at. Well, like a year and a half ago, I didn't have any experience in music. Um, I just I recorded a five-song EP, and I thought that was going to be it, and people are going to buy it, and it was going to go viral and stuff, <laughs> but it didn't. So, why but, um, do you think that was? What do you think it was? What do you know now as to why that didn't happen? Because it's, well, it's not the necessarily, right? Yeah, it's because you can't jump from A to Z. You cannot do it. Not possible. Not going to happen. So I'm looking forward to you sharing like what you're doing. So okay, you you didn't you had experience in music as a musician, right? You you would you know develop skills, right? But you had didn't have experience in the music business. You said in music, but what you really meant was the music yeah. business. You didn't realize how it kind of went. Well, so, even yeah, well even with music, like I had never had any like voice lessons or any training or anything. So I mean, I was I would say about. A year ago, really, when I got the music part down, but like all throughout, you know, since about a year and a half ago, I've just like had the biggest spoonful of music business that I could ever ask for. So tell me <laughs> and what it's like now. Bad, it's so, so what? Tell me what it's like now. Like, what have your results been? What have you noticed? How are you starting to take well, steps? Well, I mean, after everything that's transpired I'm on the radio right now and I have about 50,000 fans like accumulated over all my sites and stuff and and you've done that over the know. last year you would say right or the last nine months even yeah nine months really um, and I've played about like a hundred plus shows and I'm about to start opening for hinder on radio tour and uh, getting some bigger shows that's congratulations. So can you share share with people like what are the results that you think came out of what you learned in the Fast Forward to Fame program? Like what did you learn there that was really pivotal that shifted things for you? Well, I mean, Fast Forward to Fame kind of like just it spells everything out, you know, like what you're doing. Um, I mean, it it got me here. I mean, <laughs> Um, there's, you know, 
a huge part of it was a mindset that really helped, and that's a big part of it for those of you who haven't done passport to fame. What piece of um, the mindset in, in particular? What piece of it? Like, what spoke to you? Like, how? I did, mean, how to deal there's with one quote. Um, it really, like a lot about confidence and stuff, and how to deal, you know, with people who don't like your music, and you know, just blah blah blah. But there's one quote that I do remember. Um, it was like, uh, ew, what was it? I don't know. You don't have to quote it. <laughs> you don't have to quote it exactly. Just the gist of it. But um. I'm going blank here. No. That's okay. Just talk about the gist of it, baby. Don't worry about it. Like, just think about like what was the takeaway for you and the mindset piece? Like, what did what did it help you do? Oh, I remember. It's it's you know like you're not scared of what you can't do. You're more afraid of what what could be possible and what really could happen for you. And that's that was a big thing for me. Like you know you're you're more scared. Of, what could happen if this did go right, you know? And, and so you um, pull yourself back, right? You find that you yeah. pull yourself back. So what, yeah. allowed, what allowed you? What was that epiphany like? Like how did you just take the lid off of that, you know? Just by kind of facing it and looking at it? Ripped it off like a mandate. Just do awesome. what you're going to do. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, you know... A big thing for me is I was always scared of people, you know, saying no or, you know, or what could happen, you know, and stuff. And I wouldn't reach out to people, but one day I just started, I started emailing people. I was like, can I do this? Like, can, can, I, can I be on this show? Like, can I play at this venue? And they started saying yes, and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> and no, it was so easy. That's awesome. And, yeah, I mean, and that's how I got... Avril Lavigne's first producer, I actually sent him an email. My mom was like, send him an email. I was like, that's not going to work. Well, I did, and it worked, and we ended up doing songs together. And That's awesome. <laughs> so talk a little bit about, and for those of you that haven't checked out Sarah yet, you can find her at Sarah Skinner, S-A-R-A Skinner, S-K-I-N-N-E-R.com, and um, check out her videos on YouTube. She's got a great presence there. And um, you know she's really building her social media. Can you talk a little bit about how you're doing that? How you're building your yeah, family? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I talk to my fans like all day long. Like that's all I do. No. <laughs> but I mean, I always have my phone out and I'm talking to them. I'm responding to all the YouTube comments. Um, a big thing. I mean, you have to really be dedicated <laughs> to start building your online presence. Like I can just give you away some of my secrets because. I don't care, because <laughs> I mean you got to put in the work, anyways. You got to put in. Um, the work. For, yeah, for YouTube, what I do is I go in and I message people that have commented on other videos that I know. Well, if they like this video, they're gonna like me. So I go through and I message all those people. I do like two to three hundred a day. I mean, that's that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. I even have my mom working on it. Yeah, and for, just for you, Twitter. Just for, uh, but just for you guys to know, like, we're talking about the difference of when I met Sarah, who, you know, in the beginning, I mean, you just had kind of a, you know, very small following. But when you started to, I, to do it, I mean, we're talking about a YouTube video that's got 26,000 views. We're talking about 31,000 followers on Twitter, 6,000 on Facebook. I mean, we're talking bigger numbers than average in a very relatively short period of time. So those of you out there listening, really pay attention to what she's saying. I think a big struggle for me back then also was expecting fans to come to me and fans to find me. Bingo. I mean, Bingo. Yeah. You, you have, have to, to reach out, out there to and get them. Yeah. Yeah, you, I mean, like I'm saying, you have to message them. You have to follow them on Twitter. They're not going to know about you. You're small. Like, I'm small. And they're not going to know about me unless I reach out. Yes. So, I mean, that's a big thing. I mean, you have to play live. I mean, there's just so many things, like, well, this <laughs> I could share. Is this is important, you know. This is important because think of yourself a year and a half ago or whatever it was and, and not knowing these things and how it was holding you back and how you didn't realize it, you know, and how the exciting thing about being your own music mobile today 
is that anyone can build their brand and build their following. So I think mm -hmm. one of the things that you're saying that's really striking me that I think is really beautiful is, I'm getting chills actually, is like it's a personal connection. You know, it's it's yeah. the time and the energy that you're putting in to personally message people and be in touch with them on a personal level as an artist, you know, not just personal, personal, but you know what I mean? To really connect yeah. with music is really important. And that, and that you know, yeah. it, it's, and today it's so much about being fan funded that this is really critical. And I know a lot of times artists are saying, well, what do I say? What do I say? What do I say when I message somebody? So yeah, and you have that. And fast forward. Yes, we talk about that. We talk about how to be yourself, how to be transparent, how to connect to them. What what all those yeah, things. Yeah, and you also have you also have a list of like what to tweet, what to blog about. You have like all that stuff in fast all those forward. All checklists. All those checklists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used them. <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I can tell. I mean, you're probably, um, you are working, you have worked the program more than anybody. The program is still new, and I'm going to tell you guys about it in a little bit, but it's a three and a half month program about how to be your own music mogul and how to really understand the new music business, which is really, really, really important. I, you know, last night in D.C., we had artists, managers that have been out there in the old paradigm for a long time, and they were coming to hear me talk about it. So this is really an important time, an evolutionary time in the industry. We have, in the next couple of years, 300, uh, 300 million new users coming online through mobile. So it's the biggest surge since the beginning of the Internet in 1995. So this is a critical time and I created this program to train artists and music professionals and entrepreneurs we're bringing it to management companies and record labels because this information is really important and it's marketing but it's marketing for musicians and starting to understand the dynamic and it has the mindset piece in it and all these other pieces that are so important so you can be integrated not feel like you have to go over here and take a business course and go over here and take a artistic course or music course and go over, you know, like it's integrated it so that you can get yourself under one hat. And I'm always saying this to people, you know, last night there was a guy who has a production company and a publishing house and a recording studio. And he's like, well, I have different Twitter accounts for all of those and it's exhausting me. And like, what do I do? And I said, what's your name? I can't remember what his name is now, but he said, okay, my name is blah, 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 Mark something. And I said, well, your Twitter needs to be Mark something. And like this is, and you put what you do under one umbrella. And then, you know, if you need a separate Facebook page for your studio or whatever, I said, are you keeping up on those pages? He said, no, because I don't have time. I go, well, then it's not working. And you need to brand yourself. So those of you that are in bands, you also need to brand yourself within that band. So the band has a Twitter. Yeah. Then in the band, in the description of the Twitter, needs to be the handles of the individual, the Twitter handles of the individual band members so that people can find you, right? Yeah. But you're doing such a great job. I'm so proud of you. And I just, I just, it's, it's, it's amazing to watch you fly. And I know how hard you're working. Because when we go to your, and, and go to your videos, we can see the comments. You know, we know you're not, we know it's genuine. We know it's real. It's me. <laughs> it's you. Yeah. And I actually, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, like, People notice when you put in the time to talk to your fans and, you know, obviously you don't want to get too personal and that's just a tip for me. You don't want to start emailing back and forth. Do not start that. They will all turn into stalkers. Not kidding. That's right. But they do They publicly compliment me. They're like, Sarah is one of the only artists that talks to us and notices us and favorites our tweets and stuff. Yes. So, I mean, you so need to hop me, on that. So tell me, like, how has that made a difference in your life? life and your purpose as a musician, you know? How's that impact you? Like connecting with fans? Well, just where you are now versus where you were then and, and the relationships that you're building. Like, obviously, it's it's got to have changed you and your daily and what you think of people and kind of where you're at. Like, how has it changed you, what you're doing now? I mean... I mean, I know you're working your ass off. I know that's changing. <laughs> but you're also... I mean, every... Like, a lot of things have changed. Like, I'm 
you know, like I'm just doing my music and I mean, I know like on the business side, I know how shady people can be and on the fan side, I know how much they, I understand how much they love you and like how much they, I don't know if y'all know this term, but they fangirl when they see you and they're just like, oh my gosh. And I mean, it's just awesome to see those people that connect with you and it's, tell you, I cry to your songs and you know, it's like, and oh my that, gosh. That I love you. you, right? That nurtures you and you feel the power of that and I think that's where we're going, you know, in, in that's where we're going with music is that it's more about yeah. community and touching people and the artist feeling connected. You know, I had a manager the other day who said to me, you know, I used to do everything for my artist and just recently I had, you know, him more on Twitter and him more active and he was starting to connect with fans, you know, because the old paradigm used to be more transparency. You were behind this veil. You weren't reachable. The new paradigm yeah. is transparency and being active with people. And she said it changed his life, being able to be connected directly with fans and feel that love and feel that support and that connection and how powerful yeah. that is. You know? mean, yeah, and you're not going to, I mean... Unless you're Lana Del Rey, you're not going to get by with not talking to your fans, you know. Like, she, I'm using her as an example because she's the only one that I know that I love that doesn't respond to fans, doesn't she's really talk still, to them on any. She's still coming from that old paradigm. Well, she's, she's, also on, she's also on Universal Records, so they're in that exactly. old paradigm. But oh, we'll see how long that lasts. We'll see how long that lasts. We'll yeah. It's going to last very long. Yeah, because people are going to get tired of, she's never going to know we exist, you know, like her well, and there's and not going to be enough, there's going to be enough of you rising up, enough of the Amanda Palmers, enough of the people that really are connected to people, that I think it's going to, it's going to overtake it, you know, as this, yeah. era, as we're in this shift, you know. Yeah, but my example with her is that she is one out of all the other artists, okay, like, you're not going to get lucky. Well, you might, but very, you know, very slim chance that you're going to get lucky and your your video is going to go viral and you know, you got to just work it like none of that's ever going to happen. And if it happens, then like heck yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. But but, the but you got to plan. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. Oh, uh, no. Well, I was just going to say you have to plan as if nothing's going to be given to you. And you just have to go for it. I think that's the message, you know, that that you can you can do it and don't expect your. I think the, one of the more powerful things you said was the realization of realizing that your fans weren't going to come to you. Yeah. And they're not going to search unknown artist on Google. Exactly. It's unknown artist. Who would that be? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> no. Um, but I mean, also, I, I've just had label meetings, like with Republic and with Columbia, and one thing that I can tell y'all that they told me, they both really like me, but I need to grow my social media fan base even more. Absolutely, yeah. And you're no. and, and don't forget, don't forget, and this is something we went over last night, you know, I took an artist to Universal Records, Rainey, um, who, uh, mm -hmm. Rainsford, who's getting more into acting now, but we went to Universal with the, you know, awesome, awesome reporting, and they loved her, but, but literally said, we really love you, and we love what you're doing, and we're going to watch you and follow you, but we, we're not signing anyone who doesn't have a 50,000 person fan list, fan base. Yeah, like, and so you have to bring the fans. You know, because they, they need to know they're going to get a return on their investment because they're at that level where they're going to spend that kind of money. Um, so, But I really love what you're doing because I feel like it's really the new model, which is let me grow this myself. Let me get to the level where I have those 50,000 followers and let's see if I want to sign to that label or continue to do it on my own. We're watching Amanda Palmer. Yeah. She raised a million dollars on Kickstarter. She came from the major labels, but she has been working independently. She started connecting directly with her fans in 2002, way back. So this was, you know, thir uh, 13 years ago or 10, 10, 11 years ago, right? 
So this model is really key. And once you get to that point where you have that kind of fan base, you can raise money like that. So it's a new, it's a new world. Yeah. And, I mean, you have the fan pyramid in uh, Fast Forward to Fame. It's pretty true. It's pretty true. It tells you, you know, like, at this level, you know, when they're doing this, they're engaged, you know, they're engaged, then they, okay, they're curious, then they're a fan, then they're a super fan, and it's like, it's for real, like, this huge thing at the bottom comes up to the tippy top, and those are the fans that are going to buy your stuff and go to your shows. That's like, out of all the fans I have, there's a smaller percentage that will actually go to my shows and, you know, buy my stuff. That's right, and that's a marketing thing. Like last night we were talking to somebody who said, you know, I have fans in this city and that city, and if I, you know, if I really did a tour, well, then all those fans from those cities would, I, you know, would come to support me, and they'd come out to the shows, and I'm like, no, 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 they wouldn't. Maybe it's 2%, 4%, no. you know, are, are going to yeah. – can't count on that. You've got to build where you get those kinds of numbers. But I think the point that Sarah's making, um, you know, or the point to take away is, you know, when you said in the beginning that, you know, you go and message people, sometimes 200, 250 people a day. So to get those kinds of numbers, that's the kind of labor-intensive time that it takes to do it. And those of you that don't have that kind of time to do that, you do it in the increments that you can do it in. But I think the important thing is is to reach out and connect, connect direct. But don't yeah. get into that whole thing of emailing them. You can reach out through social. No. The other piece we were talking about was building the list, the actual list that's not just the visible social media numbers. It's the more hidden number that's your actual email list. Have you been work Have you been working on that with your newsletter and that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah, since I released um, my song Break about in February, I really started building it and I really started getting into it. But I, you know, I used the stuff from Fast Forward to Fame, like the website that you know, the website layout and all that stuff, where your email list should be. And but yeah, in the past nine months, I have about 700 people on my email list. That's awesome. Which is so, not, you know, compared to my 50,000 fans. That's not shabby, and that takes much longer to build than social media. Yeah. Those are dedicated fans, and those are people who yeah. become true fans. Those are the people that give you your opt-in. You know, and it's so often that I go, like last night, I, you know, I said to this guy who got up and started talking, this wonderful young man who's doing great. Uh, he's got like twenty-seven, twenty-seven thousand followers on Twitter, and he's he's. He's in publicity and he understands how to do that. And when I said to him, that's awesome, you know, what's the size of your actual list? And and he did what most people do and he said, What do you what what, what list do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I think this is and if you're listening out there and you're feeling that way, this is it's your actual email list. And you know, we talk about that in fast word fame and like how to actually get those people to opt in to give you their email address because you're giving them a free song or a free song sampler, you're giving away your whole record. You know, there, there are artists that are giving away their whole record just to build the list. So it's really important. And those are the people that are actually going to fan fund your career and buy from you. So, Well, it's yeah. been so awesome to have you here. Do you want to, is there anything um, inspirational or that you can think of for artists that are out there struggling um, that are maybe coming from that place of like waiting for someone to discover them or who want to get signed by a major label who, you know who want to become famous like you know what words of wisdom and advice from what you've learned in the last couple of years can you share? I mean you just have to make the connections yourself and I, this is the last thing I want to talk about is on Fast Forward to Fame, you actually have a module on connecting and how to talk to people in the music business. And that's a big thing that you really need to check out because when you meet people in the music industry, there are certain things that they are going to ask you. And if you don't know, you're just going to look dumb. <laughs> like, you know, they're going to. But you have the whole worksheet that you just fill that stuff in, read it yeah. over a few times. When you're ready to go talk to somebody, and yeah, you know, have okay, this yeah. was actually beneficial to my career. Okay, then you go talk to them and you're prepared. 
But yeah, I didn't have any connections before, and now I do because you make the connections yourself. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you're informed when you get there. You know, I think that's one of the things yeah. that people are so excited about is that there's been this big mystery between industry and artist for so long, and those walls are coming down, but they're still on that higher arc, that higher echelon. You go to a meeting. What am I? What do What do I say? Or what do I ask for? Or you you have the wrong expectations that you think you go to your meeting and you're going to get signed. You know, it doesn't work like yeah. that. It's about building relationships, and one of the things of one of the reasons I'm so passionate about it is because I didn't know as an artist when I was an artist, and so I created a program that was something that I would have wanted because I like all the details. I gotta have details, you know. And I like to go into something prepared. I like to know how to not ask the wrong questions, ask the questions that sound like I'm savvy, that I know what I'm doing, that I can actually yeah. utilize that relationship instead of piss people off or make them seem like I don't know what I'm doing, right? We want to be real. Yeah, because they will get frustrated <laughs> with you. Well, yeah, and you'll seem like but, you're green or you're a novice, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, Fast Forward to Fame, seriously, got me to that point where I was confident. I'm confident when I talk to industry people, they don't intimidate me. I know what they're going to ask. They're all robots. They all ask the same things. They all say the same words. <laughs> they're all going after the same thing. You know what I mean? There's some cool people yeah. on the street. There's some cool people there, you know. But there's but there is sort of a formula, especially on that, you know, major label level or that higher level. You know, a lot of people are like, well, if I could only meet Jay Z or if I could only meet so and so. No. You you don't wanna meet that person on that level when you're at A or B or C or D or E or even F or G. You you want You don't even want to meet them if they're not in your category, because I personally have had Timbaland. Yeah, like I've had Timbaland and Diesel, who made Lollipop by Lil Wayne, and all these people that want to sign me, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm alternative pop rock, and you're not gonna sign me because you're a rap label, and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, you, you'll have. Yeah, once you get to a level where you have some fans going on, you got some internet presence, you're gonna have people like that like throwing themselves at you. Well, it's so I mean, DJ Poet. Go ahead and tell. tell what'd you say? <laughs> DJ Poet, the guy that created Boom Boom Pal for Black Eyed Peas, texts me probably two to three times per week, wanting me to come to the studio and record a song. <laughs> so what? Not kidding. <laughs> So what would have happened in the past for you? What would your response have been had you not known as much? Honestly, yeah, honestly, when I first moved out to Los Angeles, which I'm not there anymore, I'm back in Texas, but oh, when I are. first moved, okay. I was, yeah, <laughs> but when I first moved, the actual reason for me moving was to work with T.I.'s producer. Um, I don't know if y'all know him, but he's a rapper and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, oh, we can do the rock. We can do all that. We got you set up with music videos and stuff. And no I was like, okay, I'm excited. And then we got the contract, and it was like a 360 deal. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. And so, But we ended up moving out here anyways because I made another connection uh, through Cliff Magnus, who's Avril Lavigne's first producer. And you know, it's all about making connections. But awesome. yeah, I would have taken finding, it. Finding and I the been right thinking. people and finding the right people. This is so critical, right? It's 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 yeah. about finding people that get who you are, so that you can really yeah. do something great. And having the patience to wait that out. I'm just yeah. I'm so I'm so I'm so happy for you, Sarah. And I and I feel like mm -hmm. and, I, and I know that you're not where you need to be right, you know, yet. But I know that you're on the road. To being where you need to be, and you're you're going to make informed decisions, you know, based on on yeah. the information that you've learned, and and uh, it's great to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. Well, thanks so much for sharing, and let's definitely get together when you're in New York. You absolutely have to let me know, and uh, we're again, once again, thinking of opening up a contingency in LA soon. So uh, I'm just. Oh, yeah. Feeling like I need some sunshine, and I I need the West and the East Coast together. I need to blend them. So, so I'll be I'm looking to see you again, and and I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, awesome.
Well, thanks for sharing with everybody. Thanks for being here. So you can hang out a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about the yeah, program. Sure. We're going to kind of wait for Sarah, and then you can interact with us, or you can stay on, or, you know, if you, if, when you're ready to leave, just give us a shout-out and say bye-bye. Okay. So those of you who are listening, we are um, launching the Fast Forward to Fame program. Let me tell you a little bit about what it is, for those of you who don't know. Um, it is a three-and-a-half-month program. It is a 13-module, and we just added two more modules to it. And Sarah, you might want to know about this because what we're doing is we're this is brand new. We're, we're updating and completely re-recording everything. We have a, a new look and a new feel, and we also have updated information so people in the past who've taken Fast Forward can retake the program for 150 bucks. You get all the new materials, and we have two new, or you can retake the program and be in it for 350 and we're making it real low for you guys because you've already taken the program. There's two new modules this time, and the new modules, one is on crowdfunding because it's such a big issue, and we have our whole team doing all our research, and we got some, some really awesome new statistics and some really awesome new tools and techniques for crowdfunding and fan funding. And then we have another module that we're adding, which is how to make 50 k a year, how to actually make $50,000 a year from your music as a musician, not playing in a cover band. So this is like really having an artist career, how to make 50K. So we're adding those two mod modules. But if you guys want to go to fastforwardtofame.com, you can read you know, the whole sales page that talks all about what's happening in the program and read all the details there. So if you're a browser or your phone, you can go to fastforwardtofame.com and find out all the information. We are launching the program on Tuesday. The early bird we've extended is still in effect until tomorrow night at midnight. This is a this is the lowest price that we're ever going to sell this program at again. Um, it's a fourteen ninety seven program for three and a half months. You get a private strategy session with me, and my stuff is sold out. Um, you know months in advance, so it's hard to even get in. Um, but we get a we get a strategy session with me, and we figure out like what your unique angle is as an artist and what your strategy is because. It is not the same path for every artist. It's different for every artist. Do you get that? You get uh, uh, 13, 15 modules now. Um, I know a lot of artists who are in the program keep going back to the modules to reference information. Um, there's a full PR and marketing campaign in the program. You also can get a Facebook group page, which is a private page, which never goes away, right? So you can that as long as Facebook allows us to keep those pages up. That program you have for life for as long as Facebook is up, and it's a really valuable resource. You need a quick question from another artist. You need to find out information. You can resource that really quickly. You also get three group calls during the program with me directly, and I'm very active on that Facebook page because I'm really dedicated to this program, as Sarah knows. I'm very, very dedicated yeah. to my artists and helping them shift and really, really feel a difference. That is what... You know, Kristen Riley is over here, my creative director, and she's in the picture here on her computer. We work nonstop to get as much information out to artists and to help them. It's our goal to shift 100,000 artists and get them moving forward in this new paradigm, in this new evolution of music right now, because artists need to know. It's a really, really important time. Um, and you also get... Oh, she's stealing my mouse. Sorry, um, <laughs> You also um, do get that rich community of other artists like Sarah who are working their asses off um, in, in, in their own careers and moving forward. Um, and there's a accelerator pack. There's a lot of bonuses that come with Fast Forward and Fame. You get my singer's gift vocal warm-ups if you haven't gotten them. We added, we added that. That's not on the page, but that's an extra bonus that you get because I want everybody to have it. I want you guys out there on tour to keep your voices healthy and safe and all that stuff. So my singers get vocal warm-ups, my special warm-up exercises, there's 17 exercises, and they keep your voice healthy. And they do a lot of things that other exercises programs don't have. And a lot of it is like pull your larynx down. You do specific things that actually reduce the wear and tear and the strain, which is so important right now because artists have to tour so much more. Um, and you also, uh, the accelerator pack, there's three bonus modules on there. Uh, one is a self-management module, how to manage your time, and how to balance your time so that you don't go into overwhelm. There is a musician mindset module on there, how to have a 
better mindset about abundance and money so that you can attract it to you instead of push it away from you. There's a module on the dark side of fame, how to handle, you know, how to handle rejection and the special needs of artists and sensitivities of artists. So there's that mindset piece as well as the business piece. And we walk through all the steps, like starting off with your vision, we go into foundationing, setting up your systems, your business systems, because it's really important to do that, but from a creative right brain perspective. Uh, we, and we go into building your fan base. It's a fan base growth system with the pyramid that Sarah was talking about. Then we go into uh, building your community. Oh, then the website. How, you know, the specific aspects of how to get a website to work for you while you're sleeping and actually do something instead of just sit there. So there's a lot of tools and techniques with the opt in and these things that Sarah was talking about. They're really, really, really important. So we walk you through all of that. If you have a website out there, we have a wellness checklist, or we have, you know, if you're new uh, to building your website, you're going to want to take advantage of the checklist to work with your program and your, and your designer. And then we walk through building the community and your social media and your social proof and how important that is. In the website module, we talk a lot about the list. And this, again, this is just the first five steps. There's ten steps to the program. You can find out more on fastforwardtofame.com. Um, so, what else do I want to add to that? The early bird's in effect until Friday night, um, and then the program is still open until Monday, even a few days past Monday. Um, but the program starts on Monday. We're very excited. We're um, a little over half full, and we are looking for those last bits of artists who are ready to come on board. I know a bunch of you that we met at the DC chapter are ready to join us and um, really make a shift and, and transform your music career and really get from where you are now to start to utilize these tools of the new music industry, what's happening now, so that you can start to be your own manager, your own music mogul, and really build your mini empire or your music empire, and how to do it without going broke, because this is a, this is a tough career. You know, you have to invest a lot of money as an artist to really stake your claim and say, I'm serious about this, here's my record, here's my marketing. Um, so we're really excited and this is definitely not for artists who don't have music out in the marketplace unless you are getting ready to put it out in the marketplace and you really want to get a head start on what to do. We are being joined by Becca Shack. Hi Becca. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay, great. Thanks Yay. so much. I know you're in rehearsal or you're whatever it is that you're doing and you're taking a, a little bit of time to come and join us. Becca, Sarah, Skinner's on my right. She's part of our success hey. panel. Um, were you guys in the same Fast Forward to Fame together? Yeah, I think yeah. We were, right? Yeah, you were in the first one together. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So so I was just giving filling people in on the program. Sarah, we just had a half about a half an hour conversation about what Sarah's up to and um, doing a great job. Um, you know, her Twitter following's at about thirty one thousand now. So I'm just so proud of all the work she's doing. She's talking about, you know, it's for real, it's organic, it's hard work that she's putting in and I hope you guys have gotten the value from listening to some of the ways in which she's doing that. So let's talk to Becca Shack and Becca um, is just an amazing artist. She just performed at our Merge Unplugged showcase here in New York City. And um, I have some of my favorite artists today on our Google Hangout, so I'm really <laughs> excited. And um, let me just uh, get my little notes up here. Well, Becca just played South by Southwest. She's an independent artist. She's on a label from the UK called This Is Music, LTD. And she released, I think, a couple of EPs last year and is now working on a full-length album. Um, and she just played South by Southwest and Miami Fashion Week. Congratulations! Thank you. Um, so that's awesome. And so, tell us a little bit about let's let's dial it back a little bit, a couple years from from where you are now, just a couple years ago, even. And and you know, Becca's a Juilliard grad and or went to Juilliard and is an amazing pianist, musician, recording artist, songwriter, singer and just really an exceptional musician. So she's done the work on her craft and, and it really shows. It's just really lovely. And I loved hearing you play live the other night just by yourself. You Thank know? you. I, I love that about Emerge Unplugged because you know you hear an artist's record and then you, when you hear them play by themselves, you know, there's just that intimacy and that magic and 
your voice was and your playing was just so exquisite. It was really beautiful. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Because <laughs> I know so a lot of time, yeah, like when you're used to your own productions and then you have to kind yeah. of, you know, you know, just play acoustically, sometimes it's like, oh, well, there's not that part there and there's not that part there and I wonder if it's going to translate. And I just want you to know that it really translates. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's really like, I think, what makes a good song if it stands up to, you know, all just being on its own without all the bells and whistles and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to know that the songs yeah. you know were good just stripped down raw like that. They really are, they really are, yeah and I really appreciate it. I was almost like, ooh, you need to do an acoustic record or something after <laughs> after your full length is out, you know, don't be afraid to do a do a um, acoustic or you know unplugged kind of record. It would be really cool, your voice really stands out. So why don't you share a little a couple years ago and just you know before you took fast forward, kind of where were you and what were the struggles? Well, I was just kind of scattered and disorganized and I had a lot of different goals, but I didn't have a system or a way to prioritize them. So and I was also feeling really overwhelmed by all this different social media sites and yes. just how to how to really like prioritize and focus my energy and um, I wasn't delegating at all, so um, I was also like really idealistic. I'm an artist, so I'm a big dreamer, and I knew like I had all, all these like big lofty goals, but I wasn't sure how to go about doing them and like breaking them down. So yes, that's that awesome. So, so what is it like now? Like you know, what is your music career like now? And what have the biggest results been since that time? Well, I think like just being in the program was really spiritual for me because because um, just getting down to the nitty-gritty um, like okay what this is what I want to do um, and here's how to do it and here's all these like bite-sized steps that you know that you gave me so I was really able to process everything and now I'm delegating things to a virtual assistant and you know, being awesome. able to yeah, <laughs> so okay. spending my energy and like what I really love to do, which is making music and connecting with my fans, in um in a really direct way, and um, and so yeah, it's kind of it's really simplified a lot of things for me, and now I'm able to really be a lot more productive and yeah. organized. So and more effective. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. What What are you? Tell me a little bit about what you're working on now. So I'm working on a full-length album um, with a few different producers, and um, uh, it's been like just a, a really amazing creative process for me over the last few months, and just getting into the production and the songwriting and trying to really make it consistent. Like I try to write, write a song every day if I can, wow. and um, and also just you know um, performing. I, I'm playing a show next week at Public Assembly on Thursday Yay. if anyone's around. So um, it's a, actually this really cool underground New York City in New York. New York City yeah. at this kind of like underground art showcase multimedia. There's going to be fashion, film, hair, makeup, art, and music and I'm really excited to be part of that. So um, just you know being um, being as hands-on with my performances as possible. I'm performing as a solo artist now, doing a lot of um, production on stage, being interactive with it and playing keyboards and singing and doing sort of a vocal effects while I'm singing. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Because so, my music's really electronic and I think it's it's nice to look, kind of like take it out of just like singing to a track and like really being part of the process of making music on stage and showing people um, like bringing people into that. World. I love that, into that experience. So tell me yeah. a little bit about what, what this record's about or what the process has been like for you. It's been, I guess, like the overarching feeling of it is sort of about conquering my fears and, and empowering myself and, and also um, sharing that experience with other people and making them feel like they're not alone in that. Um, awesome. So this has been a year. Year. It's been a challenging year for me personally, so I have a lot to draw from in that way. And um, awesome. well, I and think it really is that it's that time right now to really connect with people, and that's what's happening mm -hmm. in business, and it's happening in music as well, right? Mm -hmm. So as things are shifting, we're wanting to be, we're wanting to help each other more and be closer to each other. So it sounds very timely. Absolutely, thank you. I'm, I'm really excited to share it with everyone when it's finished. Yeah. So. Wait to hear it. 
So what's what's like the biggest differences that you have experienced in your life, you know, besides just getting organized, like you mentioned it was kind of spiritual for you. Like what what's the difference in some of the work that we've done and how has that impacted your life? I would say like my days just look different. Like before I would wake up, I'd spend a whole day, would go by, I'd be on the computer all day trying to figure everything out and um and get everything accomplished, but now it's a lot more simple. Like I have the time carved out where I'm definitely producing or writing or recording music or, you know, doing um, performances. And the rest of the time is, 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 is a lot more like manageable. So I, I would say like the biggest difference I found from the program is just taking away all, all that like overwhelm and, and making it all manageable and, and um, what do you think are the key what do you think are the key ingredients to that do you think was the VA a big help for you because I know a lot of artists and those of you who don't know what a VA is it's a virtual assistant who works you know as an independent contractor so you don't have to pay taxes and that kind of thing but they're there to assist you whether it's through social media or publicity or through administration even just because I know a lot of artists say to me, and I used to think this way, you know, it's like, I need a manager, I need, I need a manager. It's like, no, you need a virtual assistant. You need yeah. somebody that can come in there and help you manage your day-to-day -to, -day to take some of the overwhelm out so that you can focus more on your music and only be working in business on the things you need to. Absolutely, and at this point, I wouldn't want to live without my virtual assistant. He is amazing. He really takes care of a lot of things that, you know, we're just kind of adding stress and unnecessary, like, tasks to my plate. So, like, graphic design or designing my newsletter or website, quick website changes or travel research for when I go on tour, things like that. That's, like, you know, I don't need to be spending every second on. So. It's been so, really helpful. So what would you say, what is your piece of advice, because I know that you're in a rehearsal, I don't want to keep you too long, but if, what is your biggest piece of advice for artists out there that are trying to do it on their own and, you know, that are, that are trying to, to get their music out there and, and, and they're struggling or they're feeling like they're in overwhelm? I would really try to say, I would just say, you know, really think about what your main top three priorities are and really like strip it down really like very simple <laughs> simplistic instead ways, if you can. Instead yeah. of trying to jump from here to here, start to think about what like kind of what's here. Yeah. And then what you taught me was which was so amazing is, you know, while I wrote out my goals, you were like, okay, well, let's quantify it. Let's make it quantifiable. Like what's your what's the number or how are you going to do that and then kind of like break it down from there like I think the reverse engineer was really really helpful in just like figuring out how to get from point A to B and then um, and also scheduling everything in the, into the calendar has been really helpful because I have like I'm someone who has like a million to-do lists like you know stickies everywhere and I really was able to <laughs> to like get rid of that by by making everything schedule schedule a bowl. I don't know if that's yes. word, but it's a miracle actually. I only have two stickies on my computer right now. I remember one time and that's from living the calendar. You know, I remember one time I still have a little pile over here that I'm kind of wondering what to do with, but it's like from living the calendar and getting it right in the calendar, you start to be more productive. Um, I remember one time years ago, one of my assistants came into my studio she was in the other, she was in the office, she came into my my office, my studio, she looked at my computer and she was like, just covered with stickies. And she was like, sticky woman. <laughs> and I knew that I needed totally. to change the way I was doing things, right? Yeah, oh my god, I was the queen of that, so <laughs> I totally feel your pain. <laughs> but that was, that was really just a huge shift for me, so I have to... Yeah. Just say thank you. It was really oh, an amazing thing to be part of, and the community. Just knowing that I had the support of a really talented um, group of artists who are going through similar things I'm going through, and being able to communicate our fears and goals and and all the like, you know, step by steps together was really helpful. Um, just like a, as a sounding board. So. Yeah, and even having that community last, like on the Facebook page, you have a question, you know, long after the program's over, it's like, oh, let me just 
See if I can get this answer real quick. You can just post on Facebook because that community stays live. And that's so mm -hmm. important because artists tend to be so isolated, right? Like we're got maybe your team and your producers and stuff like that, but you're on your own, right? Sarah's on her own, sit, sitting there hour after hour, connecting with all her fans, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, right? And so you, you need yeah. to be learning from each other. Like it's really important. It's not about competition. It is not. There's not really. There is a. There's. There are almost eight billion people on this planet. There are enough fans for all of you to be successful as artists. So there's no competition because who's going to like Sarah's? You're not going to be the same fan that's going to go for Becca. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think artists really need to get to this next place where we realize we can really help each other and strengthen each other and cheer each other on and it's not competitive and we can learn so much from each other, right? It's important. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And, and just to add to what you said about that, like really, like, you know, how my fans are different than Sarah's fans and vice versa, like really being able to define that and like, you know, knowing how that looks, feels, you know, and is communicated to your fan base is, is so important. And I really got a lot of that, too, from the program. Yeah. It's, it's important to know who you are and to be who you are and not try to please everybody. You know, like Sarah was talking about earlier, Becca, that, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's producers coming to her, these hip-hop producers, and she's like, no, I'm, I'm a rock chick. I'm, I'm like that's not going to work for me. Instead, you know, and they were well known, so it would be easy to kind of jump or think, oh, maybe, you know, maybe they're interested in doing sort of a cross-pollination project or cross-genre project, and maybe that would be cool. You know, Sarah was able to stake her claim and say, no, I really know who I am, and this isn't going to work, and I'll be patient and I'll wait, because I know what's coming is going to be amazing. It's, it's sort of like, you know, dating. Like, you know, you date a guy, and he's kind of like almost there. You know what I mean? It's like there's attributes that you really like, but it's like, you know, are you are you gonna just you know go with that, or are you gonna hold out for what you really want? Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and I, I just I can't wait to hear what you're doing and hear the new record. And tell me where you're playing again. You're playing. I'm playing it next Thursday, the 11th, at Public Assembly in Brooklyn. Awesome. What time? At 11 p.m. Okay. At um 10 p.m. Oh, 10 p.m. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Maybe I'll see you. Yeah, I hope to see you soon. Go check, out, go check out Becca. And her website is Becca Dreams. It's B E C A Dreams, plural, dot com. So Becca Dreams dot com, Sarah Skinner dot com. Thank you so much for joining us. You can hang out if you want, but I know you may need to go. So. All right, Carrie. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Sarah. Bye. Sarah, did that spark anything for you as we were talking that you want to share? Um, oh, I just, I remember the part about um, visualizing your fans, and that was a big thing for me, because I was, well, like, I'm I'm not, like, super rock, like, I'm pop rock, and I like, you know, electronic stuff, but I, I like rock, too, but I always kind of envisioned my fans, like, being these, like, gothic, depressed people, like, nothing wrong with that or anything, but I, it's not who I've attracted with my music, like, I've attracted, like, People in their forties, kids in their twelves, like, like absolutely. I mean, love even, me. even like what we were talking yeah. about, like with Becca and Sarah, like there are some Becca fans that are gonna like Sarah. There's some Sarah fans that are gonna like Becca. It's not like you know divided or something, right? Yeah, but yeah, you have to know your fans to know like you know where you can play and what kind of things to do on the internet. Like I can, I get a lot of like teen sites like younow.com. Y'all just have to look it up. It's kind of, it's just kind of like this, but you just have to look it up. You just do live shows and stuff, and I do a lot of YouTube shows. Like, I'm doing a concert May 5th with a bunch of YouTubers. I know, you know, like, they're a lot bigger than me, but I know their fans are going to be, like, 12 and 15, and they don't know me, but they're going to know me, and they're going to like me. So tell me where that is so people can watch. Um, you know, or how do well, that happen? You know, or Cinco? Is it at... May, okay, May 5th. Go ahead. Okay, May 5th. Um, come on! <laughs> okay, May 5th, I'm playing at a concert called Cinco in Hollywood at Avalon. So that's...
it's like a Cinco de Mayo celebration, but it's for like YouTubers and there will be a ton of people there. But the other thing I was talking about was younow.com, like Y-O-U-Now.com. And you log in and you have just, um, you have a built-in audience of people that hang out on YouNow all day and their kids mostly. And uh, you wait in line, you wait in your queue, and then you play songs and they vote you thumbs up. And if they vote you too many thumbs down, then you got to go. But it's a really cool deal. That's awesome. That's awesome. We were just joined by Paul. Tell me. Did I I was saying you gain fans. I don't know if you're talking to me. No, say it again. Say it again. (laughs) Okay. I was saying that you gain fans because there's like little buttons below your video that says follow on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube. So that's a good way to gain your like social media stuff. Oh, that's awesome. That's you now. You now.com. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we were just joined by Paul Ivan. Hi, Paul. Hey there. Hey, it's so nice to see you. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm. So we uh, were just talking to Sarah Skinner. Paul, that's Sarah. Sarah Paul. And Paul's in the band Pinto and the Bean, who are freaking awesome. I love them. And um, you're gonna I think I heard something about you. Yeah, really awesome. Um, really, really love your music. Um, and so you are our third artist um, tonight on our little success panel here. And thanks for joining us. And we're no talking problem. about fast forward fame. We're talking about how to be your own music mogul. We're talking about the new time in the music uh, evolution uh, that we are in now, which is really exciting and also frustrating and overwhelming. And there's there's a lot of new. Um, you know, it's calling for new ways and new pathways. So we're here talking about that tonight. So, um, and Sarah's going to hang out with us a little bit. Becca, Becca Shack was just here from BeccaDreams.com, and she shared with us. So we're talking now to Paul. So, so welcome. So, so Paul, yeah, and you can check out Paul at PintoAndTheBean.com. Um, he and his uh, music partner have an amazing. How many records do you have out now? Why don't you talk a little bit? about what you guys are doing and kind of where um, you're at. Well, Pinto and the Bean just has one record, but uh, we also took, like, a, I mean, we started it um, at the beginning of 2010, and um, so we had one record. It took us, like, a year, well, over a year to, like, write the songs and create them, but then um, we took a break since last summer. I Like, the last call was on with you. I remember bringing it up, and it was actually... I was glad I joined the call because I was in a really bad place um, with the just music stuff. Was I didn't know if we were going to break up for good and the band and all that, but um, we're back on track and now we've got. I'm looking at the board like 20, 25 new ideas that we're writing and um, it's cool because we have we're yeah we're going to be recording some new stuff. Probably release like multiple EPs very soon. So that's awesome. And where are you based out of, Paul? Chicago. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So, so let's dial back a little bit um, before you took before you took the program, before you started working together, and just kind of where what your struggles were and kind of where you are, uh, where you were then, before you. Before I gotta go. You. Okay, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming. Bye, Love to you. Bye. Bye. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Uh, <laughs> see ya. Um, before fast forward to fame, I think. I just, I think the thing is, I just realized that Ivan and I are such completely unorganized people that, um, that, uh, sorry, my dog keeps jumping up on me. Oh, we love the dog. We love the dog. What, who's the doggy? Let's see the dog. Let's see the doggy. Who is it? Ah! He needs a haircut. Oh my god, he's so cute. Um, I used to have a Yorkie. Oh my god, he's so cute. His ears are so pointy. He's crazy, too. But, um. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, my Yorkies are crazy. My Yorkie was crazy for like four years until she finally started to calm down, but I totally get that. I have to figure out how to, like I have this fence, and I don't know how he gets over it, and I put two on top of each other, so that's oh my 40, God. 48 inches tall, and I get home, and he's in the living room, and I just oh don't get it. Oh, my God. Stop it. Really? Stop. Yeah, my, mine was like a Mexican jumping bean. I mean, she would just like... They're jump high. really high, right? Yeah, they jump really high. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Stop. Oh, sorry. We're giving giving him too much attention. Wait. You know what? Hold on. I'm sorry. Okay. Stop. No Stop. problem. 
I'm we're gonna... easily sidetracked by dogs here. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, uh, we're easily so... sidetracked by dogs here. Matter of fact, we were coming back from D.C. and uh, we were on the Acela today, and, and Kristen starts talking about a dog that she thinks would be really perfect for me. And so we we were dog shopping this afternoon for about two hours. Yeah, really? we were supposed to be working, but our internet was going slow. So we're like, oh, we should just go on Pet Finder and see what kind of dogs are adoptable in the area. Anyway. What kind of, what kind of dog did you find? <laughs> Cavalier King Charles I thought would be good for Carrie. She wants a small, loving dog. It's <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Anyway. Anyway. Um, dog okay. lovers, thanks for indulging us. So, um... Uh, so before joining your program, I think I was well. Like I guess, well, like in I any remember, you were feeling overwhelmed. You were feeling really overwhelmed, and and schedule wise, like time time management. Yeah, just yeah. Out over that. yeah. That's still a major problem. I mean, <clears throat> there's a common denominator. <laughs> I think that certain things I learned from your program, though. I, um. Well, okay. Let me get back to the okay. beginning. But like, yeah, I really so, were, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, overwhelmed. I think mostly time-wise, that was the biggest thing. And your program seemed to have that, um, like, a big chunk of it seemed to be about helping musicians become organized. Um, yes. But the thing that's important is to stay consistent with it, and I think that's where. Uh, well, it's hard for creative brains because. You yeah. know, you have to create, so you have to have these long periods of time where you're in that creative mode. And I know because I'm an artist. And when I was just, when I was doing Circle of Fire, um, my record um, that went on to sell 30,000 records. I mean, I, you know, I would spend like 14-hour days just in the sphere of the right brain creating. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So I, I think you know a lot of it is organizational in terms of knowing when you're in that flow. You're not going to be able to do a lot of other things, and there's there's going to be times like that, right? So you can let it kind of swing as your projects, as you're working on your projects. But I think that there's an organizational piece of it, right? That when you're, you know, if if you're going to be in that flow and you still need to attend to other stuff, you can have a VA doing it or have someone who's assisting you doing it. It's learning how to create those support structures, you know. Yeah, and uh, something from your program, actually, now that you mentioned VA, that I think is really um, interesting. Well, like, you know, it's a DIY world, but I think one problem I always had, and I think I'm just, I think I just it kind of, like, clicked just about a month and a half, two months ago, because mm -hmm. we played our first show in, like, since last July, about, and we used to play, like, all the time, and so... Um, but something hit me, and I think it's because a lot of people have talked about like how they want to help us in different ways. Yeah. But the thing is, when you say DIY, and that's one of the things that one part of your program, and I can't remember which module because it's so incredibly like there's so much in it um, about getting assistance or virtual assistance or at least hiring interns or whatever. Yes. But it might. I think it's your course combined with now I'm taking classes um, and I'm in this music business class and we have to read Donald Passman's book, the um, all, all you need to know about the music business. Yes. So the whole the whole class is that, and uh, it, the book also talks about like <clears throat> a record label and the different branches of a record label, but how things have changed now that it's you know the world is a DIY world, but but this is like these are the people you need on the team, and when I'm thinking about the people that were uh, um, want to help, I, I kind of realized we're sort of like um, unofficially building a record label. And I know that the number one thing your program stresses, um, fast forward to fame, stresses and is um, the most important thing that we we need to have our fans, but, but email addresses, really. Because yes. without those email addresses and without us staying on top of sending the emails out, which we've been really bad about, but... And uh, I know you've been about it for a while. You were really good about it for a while. Yeah, and we're getting back on track on it, like, even when I don't want to, because, like, we're still getting back on track with things, but I think yeah. things are going in the right direction. But um, the people who have expressed interest in things, and when I, like, just thinking back to your DIY or to your program, the Fast Forward to Fame, and then um, thinking about, like, how you say we need a team, I think I just didn't fully understand what DIY meant and exactly what team meant. I yeah. think it was more like 
well, we have to do everything ourselves, but the, the truth is we can't do everything ourselves. It's impossible. Awesome. And, and yeah. when you try to do everything yourself, you're just going to get overwhelmed. And Ivan will be saying, like, why, why are you trying to be a marketer and a musician and a filmmaker? And a, well, I, as a filmmaker and a musician, I, I love that, and I love writing and whatever. But when it comes to things – so somebody – I, out of the blue, like people are like this one producer guy just wants to record our new music. He came over and listened to all our new stuff, and he wants to record us. So he said for free, and I'm like, cool. And his recordings are good. And then there's another guy who wants to be our graphic designer, like keep a consistent image all throughout the internet, which is another part of your. I can't remember which part of your course, yes. but branding and just keeping a consistent image all over the internet. And then we had other friends who just want to help us. So I kind of put this thing together where I'm going to have. Since the most important thing, sorry, I go all over the place. I'm no, really, you're, no, we're following you. So your big thing, I mean, the, the number one thing is gathering email addresses. And as long as you stay updated on, you know, Facebook and Twitter and on your email addresses, I mean, sending out an email twice a month. Yes. Newsletter. Um, but, like, just gathering those emails sometimes. Like, I know that you have the incentive in, in your website that says, and that helps a bit, but if, we, if I have a few friends who are diehard fans, um, because we do have some fans that literally moved from their home to live here in Chicago and just be oh with us, which is awesome. So that, that's that's huge right there, though. That's huge. So that, yeah. that says and, a lot about you as well as your music, like who you are as people. So that's Yeah, it's not, it's not even like a – I mean, I guess at first it was fans, but now we're just friends, but they're still fans because, you know, the way they discovered us from our music, but – so, I thought, well, they want to help in any way they can. So we're get, uh, I'm asking, okay, if you guys can get one to three email addresses per day, and then, um, and I'm thinking of the things I don't want to do. So get one to three email addresses a day, which I don't think that's too many because they're on the internet all the time. They they're like Facebook nerds, so they love to just sit on Facebook all day, um, hanging out or on the internet, hanging out wherever, and then um, just putting it into the band Zoogle, which takes time. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking I'd have my mom be like the Banzoogle email enterer, so that in the end, like they send the emails to my mom, email addresses. My mom puts them in Banzoogle because my mom wants to help too. And then in the end, we're getting fans on there without us putting all the effort in. Not that we're lazy, but it's kind of. I think one of the things that you stress is that we need to do what we're. We have to do things we don't like to do, but outsourcing makes things so much easier. So yes, yeah, no, it's huge. It's a huge piece of it. So, so what are you? How has you know some of the you know what you've learned over the last you know year or so? Or what you guys have implemented? There is a lot in fast forward, and it covers a lot of different aspects. You know, besides just the business piece, there's a lot of other a lot of other things in there that you know because we try to make it a whole program so that. In, you know, an artist, wherever, whatever level that you're at, or wherever you're at, whether you're first releasing something, or you're re-releasing something, or you're in your 40s or 50s, and you're like, should I be doing this anymore? And by the way, age is total bullshit. It doesn't matter how old you are anymore. This is a new paradigm, so you just lose that conversation and don't worry about that at all. You know, this is you just you know don't let it stop you from making your great music. You know, and I just mm -hmm. really always want to make sure to say that to artists. I put out my record when I was 40 and I was very successful with the sale of that record and also with just, you know, it was speaking to to people that needed to hear it and it's really important. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Again, there's, you know, almost 8 billion people on the planet. You know, if you can just find a thousand people or, you know, 5,000 people or whatever it is, again, on your email list, not in social media. That social media is important, but the list is even more important. Right. You can have a really solid career, and so you know. And again, we're seeing it with Amanda Palmer. We're seeing it with you know a lot of artists that aren't even at, at Amanda's level um, become very successful with it. So um, you know, what what of what you've learned so far? Um, what do you think the biggest results have been from learning that you know? Yes, it's a DIY world, but it doesn't DIY world. I don't even really use that term anymore myself because I think it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't help artists, you know. It's yeah. more the world. It's an independent world, and the independent world means that you need people to help you. And oftentimes, people think they need a manager, and I'm like, you need an administrative assistant to help. But you. you know, when you say people need a manager, and when you say when you say in your program, pe musicians need to learn how to manage themselves. 
I think that's kind of like what I just learned about a month ago. What I was saying is like outsourcing to, which it's all in your program, but for some reason when I was going through it, maybe because your program is it's so in-depth. I was just thinking about it today. Your program's sort of like like the P90X for for musicians I or something. I'm really sorry. I'm, no, I, but it's, I have it's, to go there. No, but that's that's good because really only a serious musician should get it because it's not like... It's not. Ivan really loves it too, and he's not. He's out. He's out at work. He's also my roommate. But um, yeah. but um, yeah, he really loved what was what we were doing in it. And like, hopefully, when we're back on track, we just got to go back. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, you can go back and reference it because I kind of made it as like a bible, or made it as like a tool that covered everything, so that you can be sure. I I can be sure that I'm going to address all those issues with. You know, I guess mm-hmm. my brain is very in depth on things, and I want all the details. Like I, that's how I learn. I need to know all the details, and so I wanted, you know, I, I don't want to overwhelm you, overpower you, but it's like it's there if you need it, and it's there if you need to reference it later, <clears throat> no matter what, what, where you're at in your career. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. What What do you think is the biggest difference that it's made? in your life, you know, nothing's perfect and now you have your own, you know, we always get to a different level of struggles or a different level of frustrations as we kind of, you know, go from A to B to C to D to E, but I think the biggest thing I try to get musicians to do is not jump in their thinking from A to Z, you know, let's go from A to D, then let's go from D to G, you know, let's let's put the steps in here like you can we do in the first module well, of the dream formula, you know, this well, helps that, you move. Yeah, well, that, that's my favorite thing about the program is just it is a step by step program because the only other one that I can think of that is a step by step is Ariel Hyatt's book, but yours is like way, way, way more in depth. Like hers is great too, but yours is just like um It's on steroids, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like it it takes everything from her book but to a different level, like way more in, in um um in depth, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I personally, I need that, and I know it's just like I said, I'm a scatterbrain, and I'm the kind of person I need to see step one, I need to see step two, I need to see step three, four, like yeah. And I the work framework, the framework, yeah. Yeah, because without that, I can't. And uh, and honestly, because I haven't looked at it in a while, but um, you know, like I remember the first time looking at the goals, the first module, and I. I think I was kind of like, I probably was overwhelmed by it, or maybe I just went by, through it too quickly because I had done goals before, but yeah. then I went back again, and I tried it again, and I, it took like a whole week to do, and I sat down with Ivan, and I will say that everything looked so much more realistic, like way easier to achieve, because even money goals, like that was a separate yeah. thing. Um, <clears throat> and so... But then the band like kind of fell apart, so I was just wasn't motivated with anything. But I yeah. do know that there was this chunk of time where both Ivan and I both were like, "Wow, it's really cool!" Like how this program, we're seeing everything really clearly now. Like you yeah. know, because yeah, I've actually still got the the vision board. You, I think, I'm, I think it was that same. Uh, yeah, it's up there, but yay. Whatever. Yeah, well, it's always you know, and we always have to readjust, and we have to like, you know. We have to stay on top of things, but I think the most important thing is to have the materials that accessible to you for whatever it is that you need, and you know, you know, like there's several people in the program. We're now on our third run this this uh, coming up this Tuesday. We're starting it, but we're in our third the run. Third one already? Yeah, the third one already, and we're rebranding it, so it's it's all rebranded. It's updated. It has a cleaner look. Um, we're we just you know. We're putting a lot of effort into this, re- this you know, new launch of, of Fast Forward 3 because we're, we, we want to take what we did in the program so far, we want to clean it up, make it simpler, make it easier, and take all that information and we're just always on a mission to try to chunk it down to make it even more accessible. And then we're adding two new modules, one of them uh, bonus modules. We haven't even announced it on the page yet, but we're adding a module about crowdfunding since it's such a big deal. And we have oh, like Kickstarter and... Yeah, like when I did the program, I wrote that program, and now I have a team like Ms. Kristen Riley, my creative director over here, who's working nonstop because we don't have enough fingers or enough time to get done everything that we need to have to get done. And my new addition is Carrie Lowe, who's not here today, 
um, who are also who's also a creative brain working on the program. Who's done a lot of crowdfunding and a lot of. So we have a team now that's like helping me go back and tear it apart and you know refine it and make it even better and be real. You know, always be cutting edge, but again, take all of the you know the intensity of the program and continue to try to simplify it so it's the framework that it makes people. So like a, a little, a little less, like overwhelming, kind of. Yeah, we're just trying to chunk it down so that it has the scope of. It the, wasn't really overwhelming. It's just, it, it, but it was a lot to take in. But it's a lot to take in. Yeah, we're not taking away anything. We're just, huh. you know, it's how you present something that, uh, in, in, in that that allows someone to really understand, like the difference in. They say this in marketing. Like the difference in someone who, a marketing expert who, like say an entrepreneur or marketer, who is making a million dollars or someone who's making ten million dollars is framework. Is framework? It's framework. Hmm. It's all about how you present it. Like Donald Passman's book. You know, one of the things that makes it so great, especially the first half, the second half, and I'm talking about the, I haven't read the updated book. The second half is the details of the music business, which are like, oh my god, it's so complex. But the yeah. first half, he breaks it down so simply that you can really digest it. And so it's all about framework, you know. Oh, okay. Um, so we're putting in a module about crowdfunding, and we're also putting in a module about how to make 50k a year from your music, directly yeah. from your music, and using indie bands as a model, so that people can really see where the money's coming from and different examples of it. Because it's really important. You need to you need a model, and I think that's what's been missing in the music industry for so long since it was so much about the veneer and the and the you know the, the mystery of it, you know, handled by the big labels. And so now as those walls are coming down, artists need the tangible, like how am I actually gonna gonna make a living doing this in a in a in a real way. And so we're, you know, reaching out to indie indie bands who are making a living and how are they doing it and breaking it down and showing you so that you can model that or you can get those you know those ideas for yourself for how to actually do it. So, so we're excited about it. We're making it available to people like you who, who want those updates for like 150 bucks or something. So you, you can get all the materials because it's a program that you're going to want to revisit because mm -hmm. uh, there's so much in it. But I I'm very excited about you guys and and I'm glad that you know that you are back at it and Pinto and the Bean. I just love your music and I, I love what you're writing and. Um, and I love the energy and the passion that you guys put behind your stuff. And um, I know how important it is for uh, indie artists to hear that and for you to hear that. And it's very genuine. I really love your stuff, and I share it often here at the studio. So uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, there was I, I wanted to one thing you mentioned in a recent call that you did. I just want to before I forget because I know you talk about goals. I, I, um, but one thing that you said, and I think that's that's another thing with a lot of musicians, is that when um, you tell them set, you know, you have to set a goal for the year or whatever. Um, but then, well, you said something. I can't remember. Yeah, I was in one of the phone calls, I think, and you said try not to set more than two or three at the most. Otherwise, you'll get overwhelmed. Out of time. And I, and I think that's one thing about like constantly not getting things done because you have too many things that you're trying to accomplish. So I just thought to myself, like I said, like a month and a half ago where I thought it felt like we're kind of creating this label or unofficial, that why not just have the one and only goal is get this number of people on the mailing list by the end of the year. And that's it. Yes. Because if, if that's the one and only goal, you can forget about everything else because everything else is going to naturally come in, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. It, yep. it, and it's identifying it's identifying what that goal is that you really want or that you really need, right? Well, I mean, it seems like everything comes from the mailing list. Like, everything yeah. is going to come from that because... Yes, yeah, your sustainable career, your actual income and your sustainable career is going to come from that. And the relationships yeah. that you build with those people, they're not just numbers, right? And you know that. Right, them. right. But that that's just a matter of, like... I make sure we send an email out, even if we don't have anything to really say. It's just like saying hi, you know? Absolutely, because you need to be consistent. Yeah. Yeah, and like, you know, even the last one we sent out, I'm, I didn't even look at how what the percentage was. Like, because usually our percent of a read rate is actually like 30 to 40, which is, uh, I know that's, that's higher awesome. than... 
That's but, awesome. but I knew the last one was going to be lower, and I looked at it, and it was 20, but because it, I knew there was nothing that interesting, because it, it wasn't, you know, but... Um, well, it's also the subject line. The subject line is really important, and it's I know. nice to, you know... Um, to keep track of that so that you can see, like we have a we have an Excel sheet where we have the name of the e-zine and then we can see what the open rate is so that we can start to see, oh. you know, what what are the what are the and and I will say on a marketing level, um, usually when you're touching pain points, you generally get more opens. It's 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 kind of a crazy pain, pain points. Pain points, yeah. Like one, one of our big, well, one of our biggest opens recently was the title of the museum was "It's Depressing." Oh, it's depressing. Yeah, and 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 I'm Miss Positive over here, so I don't even know why I'm sharing that. But it's a marketing thing. I don't always use it, but I well, th I think part of what it is is that it's identifying with people. You know, if you're if you're only if you're if you're you know. If you're coming from here, like you're all polished and you're all together, you know, people people are in their own lives thinking, well, they won't understand me because my freaking life is a roller coaster, right? Because most people's lives are up, you know, in the human spectrum of emotion. We, we go through a lot of up and down, right? So, you know, no matter what level you're at at your career. So when you're trying to be relatable, you've got to be vulnerable. And, and it's more about vulnerability, I think, than anything else. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned that, it, or it's interesting you mentioned that because I was just jogging the other day, and um, I just recently found out this guy from high school that I wasn't that great of friends with just died like a uh, a week ago, not e not even a week ago of um, I guess he had an alcohol addiction, and so I think it was um, drugs or alcohol, and so in, in my head I was thinking, well, you know, one of the songs on our record, it's the one that Ivan sings, and many people there. Are, been many people who just told us how that, that's like one of, actually a friend just recently said he wants that song at his funeral and I was like wow. holy crap because it's a song that Ivan wrote about his best friend who also died of um, of an alcohol problem and I was thinking well I don't know if it's a, if it's a good idea to use this as our subject you know to send out to people but just say you know how death inspired a song I think and, so I mean I it's 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 real life it's the truth yeah. It's just it seems like a little too real. You know what I mean? It's like it's a little too, to you know. I, I was thinking of even posting that song and like um, or a lot of the people who were like. So. Really I don't think so. I think you can strike a chord with that. I think it's the way you present it, and I think you know I have faith in the way that you guys present things. You do it very yeah. well. So yeah, because I don't want to. Sometimes it means just you know, how can I? How can I? Because somebody out there is struggling with that. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, and so oh and I, I thought it was interesting that you said that. So you could call it the pain point. Yeah, yeah, you know, or where or the vulnerability point. You know, like yeah. like one of the things you're going to see in our in our sharing or our marketing is me being more vulnerable and sharing. Like we just I just did this teleseminar with Ariel, and and we uh, we came up with the idea of artists sharing. Their pain points and their well, their struggles and their disappointments and how much rejection and disappointment is a big part of you know music career and artistic career, and so we came up with the idea that Ariel and I would share you know a difficult moment from our past, a story from our past, and we're going to be doing that a lot more just because we want to make it real and so that because when you share a difficult moment in your life, you give other people permission to not be perfect. And it empowers them in an odd sort of way. You know, it makes them feel like they're not alone in their yeah. suffering or in their imperfection. And we need this as human beings. You know, it's like when Oprah shared about her her sexual molestation when she was very young. She, you know, she, at a certain point she started talking about it, and it was it was powerful. It, it's not a manipulation. It's difficult to talk about those things. It's more like she wanted to, to come out with it. And it's the way you present it, you know, that's not an opportunistic thing. It's more about the humanity of it, like the, mm -hmm. the humanness so that other people can heal and other people can feel better. So, you know, even this thing about your friend, it, it, it makes life very real and people want that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like... I, 
I don't know. It kind of sucks that you have to like connect marketing with it, but it, it's real life. I mean, I understand. If, you know like if, you, if, you, if you think of marketing as sharing. Yeah, and but like your whole pro program that you know, I love how I can't remember which module it is, but you mentioned how we need ten thousand hours at, at to be uh, successful at anything, and it's funny because as much as I've tried to un thought of understood marketing, like I would say right now, I'm I will understand it so much better than I. It's just something you have to keep doing, you know what I mean? And then and then you just slowly start feeling like, yeah, I can be a musician and I can do this. Like it all makes sense, and that's how I see like. One big band in Chicago, they might break up, and the the lead singer can start another band, have 500 people at a show in like two months, and it's a brand new band because he knows, like, he's got his whole, he just gets because it. He's you know? brand, yeah, because he's brand, and he's also branding himself. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And which we need to do. Well, yeah. I, you know, and 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 I'm just I'm happy to talk to you and hear you talk like this and feel like it's integrated for you as an as an artist. You know. So that yeah. it doesn't feel so separate and it shouldn't. It should be integrated. It, well, honestly, I feel like I'm like, oh, God, I hope I'm not losing my creativity or something because suddenly I'm actually enjoying being in this music business class and I enjoy this stuff where Ivan's like, he wants to vomit as soon as I say the word marketing. And I'm like, well, somebody's got to do this. It's like somebody has to do this. Well, so, and it's also like you weren't on earlier when Sarah was talking, and you know she was in that first round of fast forward, and you know she's got like thirty-one thousand Twitter followers. I mean, she's on fire. But it's, she was an hour. She was an hour of the first yeah, one. Right? Yes, yeah. and she had five hundred followers or two hundred fifty-five. I remember she was nowhere. Like thirty thousand now. Thirty-one thousand. But what she's doing is she's reaching out and connecting to every single person who's commenting on everything and developing relationships with them and it's all people you know what I mean it's all and she's like look I could share with you the secrets that I'm doing but I don't mind because you have to sit there and do the work you know so it's like is the it marketing? Right? you have to still do the work so you is know. it marketing or is it connecting to other human beings it's totally connecting I mean that's the one thing but that's what marketing is it's just I think a lot of people look at it as this big mechanical like that's it's right. But it's really just about be creating relationships with people. But the thing is, I'm like, I'm also pretty antisocial person a lot of the time, and I, I don't meet. It's not that I dislike people. It's just sometimes it's hard to. I'm not like, um, what do you to call connect, it? To connect, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, I do my um, best to 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 do that. I mean, well, I think a lot of artists are, you know introverted extroverts or or they're more introverted because we spend a lot of times a time alone we we are kind of more introverted it, that's not uncommon but what we're talking about here is connecting to other human beings through our music right. and using the tools that are at our fingertips today to do that yeah yeah um and you know to go back to what you said about how like we need to send out um or what the pain? Uh, what do you say about the email? Pain points. Pain points. Pain point. And like the email I sent out back in June because I was leaving my job. You know that got the most comments on our blog, and uh, a lot of people responded to that. And um, what I was going to say, just real quick, because I know you mentioned the multiple one. Another thing that I don't think I fully understood it in your fast forward to fame about making. You have one chart that shows all the different ways you can make stream, uh, money as a musician. Like it's all these different ways to make it and um, but sometimes and I, I think that this should you might disagree with this and a lot of people might disagree with this but I think that like a lot of musicians that have full-time jobs but they truly believe that they can become something as musicians because um, I've been a teacher for for years in Chicago public schools and it took me leaving that behind to slowly like I was like lost and and to wake like, up, yeah, to wake up and realize what it was going to take. Yeah, and I'm, but I'm still not making uh, you know good money as a musician, but I know that's going to happen. But like to be able to see the world from a different perspective or like a fresh perspective again is just really important. To be able to, I don't know, like, it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing what you're doing. I mean, that's a really bold, big step, and you're not giving yourself, you know. But I, I couldn't have been excited. Okay. I couldn't have been so excited when you're in it. And it's not that I disliked teaching. It's just that I disliked that kind of lifestyle. And a musician's lifestyle 
is not like that. It's not an everyday exact same thing. And it, um, uh, so, like, right now, I think I'm in one of my, like, the happiest places I've been in a really long time. Um, awesome. You know, because we're writing music again, and we're, and, like, now I'm making money online, like, making different streams of income. It's totally weird how I found this stuff, but the point is, yeah, there's, it's other awesome. I, what I realized is, as a musician, it's just like what you said in your program, like, money, it's it's kind of like a treasure. At your, you, you just have to find money in different places because it exists. It's just that a lot of us are trained to believe that the only way it's going to come in is from, you know, a, a paycheck every two weeks. But the truth is, there's money everywhere. You just have to, you just have to like, kind of search for it. And personally, I enjoy an that's, adventure. That's tweetable. There's money everywhere. You just have to find it. Yeah, it's true though. I mean, I, that's what I'm learning. So. Oh man, well I'm really excited and thank you so much for coming to, to join us. Do you have like, you know, one last sort of words of wisdom to someone who's um, just, trying to do it? I think like any serious musician should, uh, I think that joining your program is awesome. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a lot of time and energy, but in a good way because you're going to start seeing results, I, I think, for sure. I mean, if they're serious, so yeah. if they're not yeah. serious and they... You know, I don't know why they would join, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, but, to learn, to learn. Yeah. But, you know, I I'm I'm really excited about what you're doing, and I, I well, can't wait. Your pro oh, sorry, I was just gonna say your program has a lot of awesome information that it's like um, secret information that you could really only get. I mean, it's um, it's detailed. stuff that is just gonna start working it, once once they they start applying it so anyway. yeah and it takes a while and I think that's why you know I wanted to have you guys on today who were in the first run we're only on our third run I mean it's only a year and a half you know a little yeah. over a year and a half and so it takes it, it it's gonna take it takes time to implement we you know we're starting to see results now like a lot of people will ask me well some of the people in your program um, you know, I've worked with big stars and legends and that kind of thing, but I worked with them on vocal stuff and, and on career stuff, but not within this program. And so people are looking at people coming out of the program. It takes a while to implement. You know, Sarah Skinner's like responding to 200 people a day. Like, you know, it has a domino effect as you yeah. work through it. But well, and it's the things you. Your real career it takes a while. Yeah, and the things you teach, like we had a lot, like back when we. It, that's why it's it's hard to to because we're not right in our band right now. If it was like a year ago when we were just actively playing shows all the time, many, many bands like looked up to us and thought we were so professional and even sound guys and pe people at venues. Uh, and, you know, and a lot of it, I, I know it's because of your program because we just implemented everything. So people go to our website, they're like, wow, your website looks so professional. And it's like, well, we just followed everything that, well, I, we don't tell them that. Ivan was at Matt. Oh, I, I, yeah, he, well, you know, Ivan's like, why are you giving away the secrets to other people about, uh, and I'm like, it's not really like you're giving secrets away. I mean, it's, you want your other friends' bands to succeed too, and, you know. Well, and we were talking about that earlier with Becca, like I was saying, you know, there's almost a billion people on the planet. There's no shortage of fans. It doesn't need to be competitive. Yeah. You know, to, who, who likes one band is not going to like another and let people make their choices, and you just do a good job of putting out the best freaking music that you possibly can and then yeah. do a good job at like marketing it and, and being where you need to be for people to find you and being able to capture and catch those leads, those fans that want to follow you and provide an experience for them and you will find your way. You will become successful and create a sustainable career. It's never been more possible than right now. It's a phenomenal yeah. moment and we're getting ready for the biggest new surge of online users in the last three years, well since the beginning of the internet, it's 300 million new users from last year going forward over a three year span that are coming online through mobile. So it's a very important moment and the question to ask yourself is are you there to greet them in the way that gives them an experience that they can fall in love with you and be a part of what it is that you do every day in being so that you can do what you love, and it's totally, totally possible. So you think things are still getting better for musicians? And oh, oh, way better for musicians. Yeah. Even and, now than like a year ago. Yes. Okay. Yes, because now we have the technologies and the tools more and more, and more people are coming on board. So yes, 
we're, we're creating the new music business, and it's about fan-funded careers. And it's a, you know that's where we are right now at this moment. It's gonna we're gonna keep adding to it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's so great to talk to you. Do we have any questions? We do. Oh, okay, we do have some questions. Okay, so Paul, you can hang out if you want and comment, or you're you know you're free to go. I, I know your time is valuable, and I don't want to you know take. Oh, it's okay. I'll hang out. But I, I'm just so grateful for you to come on and, and talk about what you're doing. And everybody, check out um, Paul and Ivan at Pinto and the Bean, um, dot com. Um, very clever, awesome musicians and creating some some good waves out there with people. Um, when I look at this document, I'm seeing stuff from before. Is that from today? Look at the, look sure. at the web. I want to. For those of you that are asking questions, I want to make sure that I'm answering anything that's asked live. So yes. I'm looking here and I don't I don't see anything. There you go. These are all from today. Yep. Okay. So somebody. Okay. So what, a question from Dan is: uh, Are you offering a new crowdfunding chapter? My email list is below a hundred. Should the list be a thousand or more before I crowdfund? And will you, will this um, new module you are offering in fast forward address this or help me in the early stage? Um, Yes, it will because you're getting the technology and the information of when you should crowdfund. And yes, I would agree, you don't want to start crowdfunding when you have a small list. You know, you need to build your list. There needs to be a strategy for your crowdfunding so that when you do it, you're successful with it. And it, yes, you're right about that. So it's important to build your list first and learn how to do that. And in our crowdfunding um, uh, module, yes, you're going to learn all about that. Uh, from Michelle Thomas, she says, since you've collaborated with many of these people, how are your program modules different from those of Ariel Hyatt's, John Ocasek, and Bob Baker's? Um, well, Ariel Hyatt, as you know, Paul was just talking about, um, he did her, her music success um, um, in nine weeks book, and it's a really well-written book, and I'm friends with Ariel, and I really love what she's doing, um, and would always promote her um, and believe in what she's doing, and she's very passionate about what she's doing. But I think my program is much more detailed. Um, one of the, well, the feedback that I get from artists is where, you know, Ariel lays it out. I think it's because I come from an artist background, and I've been there, and I've had to sell records and promote and tour and all that, that I maybe can fill in the blanks more about what the details are that you need to do. So what I, the feedback that I get from other people about what differs from what Ariel and I do, and she's a social media guru, Whereas I include social media, but I'm talking about a much bigger picture for artists, and I fill in the details of, okay, if how are you going to get to those thousand people? Like, yeah, she might say, well, you know, all you need is a thousand people, but I will fill in the details more about how you can actually tangibly, because one of the things I'm really passionate about is the tangible results and actually showing artists how to do it. Why? Because I was an artist that was completely lost and didn't know how to do this stuff, so I want so genuinely to help you. You know, this is not just a music business course that has a bunch of good ideas in it. Like, I want to see you shift and make a difference. And here I am talking to Sarah and Paul and Becca, who have been in my programs over the last two years, and I stay in touch with them and I watch what they're doing and stay in touch on the Facebook page because it's important to me. To watch them grow, that's part of what gives me joy in helping to shift artists at this, you know, important moment where they need guidance and they need help. Um, from John Okasek, John is more of a um, marketing guru. Like he is, and that's just kind of strictly his thing. Like he's, you know, I've studied marketing as well for the last four or five years now online with, with several different people. Um, you know, from regular, you know, internet marketers, but also more to uh, entrepreneurial marketing um, and to music industry marketing and that kind of thing. Where uh, John has done some of that, but I think he's he's really more coming from a business perspective only, um, and he talks very much in business um, jargon. And I, again, I respect everything that John does, and I think it's great. I think I'm more detailed from the artist right brain. Mindset and I encompass much more than just marketing. Um, Bob Baker is the you know he's the first one really on the internet. Um, also a wonderful um, um, person to learn from, and I adore Bob. Um, and he 
Uh, his books are tremendous. They are, you know, Bob doesn't really have detailed programs like this, um, but, um, you know, his words of wisdom, I'm always talking to Bob about what he's doing. But again, this is a much more detailed program, and I also include mindset, the mindset piece of what it is to be an artist, how to be more empowered, and how to walk with more worth in the world as an artist is one of the things that I'm so um, passionate about helping you do. So Which, by the way, I just want to say that's one of the things Ivan loves about your program is that alone. Oh, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Yeah, the mindset piece is I get a lot of um, kudos for that. Or I get, you know, down in D.C., they were, you know, most of the emails we got today, we spoke at the Recording Academy last night in D.C. in the chapter. And that mindset piece, I think it's because I've studied spiritually my whole life and, you know, not in religious circles, just spiritual work and, and always been interested in that that as a way, the law, we could talk about it, the law of attraction, you know, all that kind of stuff, but from more of an alchem alchemy sort of level, like how to actually transform things and change things. And I think it really comes from my early childhood, which was very, very difficult, and I had to learn how to go inside of myself and pull out my own strength. And, you know, I'll talk more about that another time, but it created this sort of thing in me that I'm very passionate about helping people find their strength and their confidence. And so whether it's on a business level or a mindset level or an artistic level, those that's always peppered into my programs is strengthening who you are as an individual. And to me, that's ultimately strengthening who you are as a brand because to me brand comes from that. So and I'm also very big on branding, but from again, from the artistic perspective, and then we pepper that into the business. So it's multi-layered. There's another question. Uh, Kelly Carpenter says, as an instrumental artist, I was wondering if there are any aspects of marketing instrumental music that are different than vocal music. Definitely. I mean, there, there are different aspects of marketing different kinds of music. We do have several instrumentalists who've been in the program. Uh, we now have managers and, and producers and DJs and uh, all, all, all aspects of the business we're doing the program, it will apply to you very much. Um, and um, yes, there are. Yes, that's the end. We, we talk about that uh, in the program. And I think the last question that I've gotten, unless there's any more coming my way, is uh, from Ralph uh, Dijon or Dijin. Or Dijin. He says, how did you cut back on all the social media clutter? Not sure if I understand that exactly, um, but maybe what social media to follow. I mean, one of the things we talk about in the program is that I outline the big three, and that's Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. And then, of course, there's Tumblr and there's Pinterest and there's Instagram and there's you know yada yada yada. But those three remain the three most powerful tools. YouTube is the is the second biggest search engine in the world. But here's the thing. You have to decide, and you do this by noticing where your fans are and noticing what's working. You have to decide, well, first of all, you have to learn each one because they're all kind of different. You do that by posting, you know, start with Facebook and then move to Twitter and then or go Facebook to YouTube or whatever that is, depending on if you're, you know, putting up videos. But you have to watch and see where you're getting the biggest responses because this will tell you what's going to work for you because you don't want to splatter your energy everywhere. And I think this is one of the biggest things that artists have as a takeaway from the program is, yes, it's so easy to go into overwhelm. There are 10 million things to do every day. My team and I deal with it too. It's the same for everybody. It's no different for anybody. But, the, but as you start to realize that you need to go in the direction that it's working and you'll figure out the rest. And again, like what Paul said earlier about setting three goals or one top goal. You know, I always say have a wig, which is a wildly improbable goal. What you really love to see happen, you always need to have that there. Then there's the, the goal that is within reach, but it's slightly out of reach. You know, it's like, I don't know if this could happen, but I really want this to happen. And then there's the tangible, attainable goal. Like, this can definitely happen. And, and then what you need to do is create steps for each of those. But it's all about how you cut back on clutter and overwhelm is by simplifying and cut out the frick frack. Like, 
I have a thing on Pinterest, but I'm not pursuing Pinterest because it's not really where my audience is, and I'm not really quite that interested in it, honestly. I'm more interested in Instagram as the, the social media tool that I've picked up more recently. But for me, it's Facebook and Twitter. It's not even YouTube so much because I'm not posting video after video. So again, you have to make it fit you. So I hope that helps you. Um, any last minute thoughts, Paul? And do we have any other questions? Do we have any other questions, Kristen? If not, then yeah, then we're at the end of our Google Hangout. Any any thoughts, Paul, or just thank well, you so now, much. I just now that you mentioned the YouTube thing, I'm just curious to know, like, if you're not on there all the time because you use Instagram. Do you still think, I mean, it's still, it's still, you that important. It's still important to have a presence there, yeah, but you, you right. want to be active on the social media channels that are working for you, because, you know, not all of them are going to work for all artists, I guess, is, you know, it depends on what you're doing, actually, on social media, although I would say Facebook and Twitter are, are absolute every day, essential, yeah, they're essential, Twitter, you can grow your audience faster than you know, and YouTube too. Like Sarah Skinner is having a great response on YouTube because she posts videos all the time, and her fan base, a lot of her fan base, is on is on YouTube. It depends on you know how much you're posting video. Um, but again, you know, the whole point is to try to create a strategy that fits you. If you're not, don't all of a sudden go into overwhelm. Oh, I have to post a video every single week, and that's what's going to work. If mm -hmm. you know, even if you try that and it's not working, then it's not the right fit for you. Don't force the square peg into the round hole. See what's yeah. working and utilize that. But Facebook and Twitter are really essential. And YouTube, I would say, those three to me are for a musician are really important. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining. We're pooped over here. We've been traveling for the last couple of days, so we're going to sign out. But for those of you watching and listening, um, thank you so much for joining us, and we're going to do a lot more Google Hangouts and be, you know, upfront and, and, and uh, up front and personal. I, I'm looking forward to when Google figures out how to have more people on the video chat. Um, I'm excited about that. I think now you can have 9 or 10 or 11 or something like that, but it would be great to have more interaction and, and chat so we could chat on... Uh, can we chat on this side here? Um, but it's only people who are in the, yeah. Who are in the chat, as far as I know. Looking forward to the technology getting more sophisticated on Google Chat, but we're excited to be live with you. And um, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much, Paul. I'm looking forward to your music. Keep me posted. I get, okay, your, you. I get your emails, and I'm looking for them regularly. They help me okay. stay up on top of what you're doing. Say hi to Ivan. I will. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Hi, everybody. Bye. Bye.